do you like toe tips? Well, I like giving them to you. And today we're gonna get some key toe tips and look at three reading questions and show you how you can get the answer. So join me, let's look at the first toe question. This answer requires grammar and context. Let's eliminate two answers because of grammar. First, eliminate D, with. With is always a preposition. Therefore, it needs to be followed by a noun form, not subject verb, not verb, not adjective, a noun form. Let's look at some different ways to use with. First one, I opened the business with a great deal of nervousness. This is correct. Notice nervousness is the noun. If you open it with nervousness, nervousness is the partner here. You're nervous, but I opened it with a great deal of noun. I need a noun. Another example, the business was a success with it being profitable after six months. This is correct. It being profitable is a gerund phrase. There is no verb here. This is considered a noun. Now let's look at the wrong version. The business was a success with it was profitable after six months. This is incorrect. We have with and then it was. This is subject and verb. This does not come after a preposition. With is a preposition. Let's look at one more example that is incorrect. The business was a success with it was making money after six months. Now, if we have it, that's a subject, and was making is considered a verb. But correct, the business was a success with it making money after six months. Once again, this is a gerund phrase. So, if we look at the TOEIC question, it has Prado Cafe, which is a subject, and a verb, has. But remember, you can't have a subject verb after with, so eliminate D. Next, eliminate C, for the same reason as with. Due to is a preposition, not followed by subject and verb. Let's look at an example. This is wrong. Due to the cafe only has one branch. You have cafe, which is a subject, and has, which is a verb. You can't put this after a preposition. The correct form would be due to the cafe only having one branch. There is no verb here. This is just a gerund. Or due to the cafe's only branch. And if you stop there, this is correct because it's just a noun. You could also use a noun clause. Here's an example due to how many branches the cafe has. This is correct because it is a noun clause, how many branches the cafe has, not the cafe has many branches. That is subject verb. But here, this is a noun clause. Finally, you could also say due to the fact that the cafe only has one branch. The fact that subject verb is considered a noun clause. So you can have this after a preposition. But you cannot say due to Prado Cafe only has one branch because you have due to and your subject is Prado Cafe and you have a verb has. You can't have that after due to. Now we have to choose based on context. So we've got A, a and B. To get context, it's a good idea to read the whole idea and simplify. So if we simplify, it could be blank. It has only one store in Australia. It will open four more this year. Well, if we use once or as, they both work grammatically, but one is much more logical. Both of them can be followed by subject verb. Once can equal when, or as soon as. As can equal while or because. 
So what makes more sense? If we use once, we're saying when it has only one store in Australia, it will open four more this year. If we say as, it would be like, because it has only one store in Australia, it will open four more this year. You can see that the because is more logical and you can replace because with as. Therefore, the answer is as. Okay, 121, take your time here. For this answer, you need to know vocabulary and context. First, let's look at one expression. In a gesture of goodwill. You could also say as a gesture of goodwill. What this means is you do something to show you are nice or that you are fair. Now you could be lying, but this symbolizes, it's like a symbol to the other person that you are nice. Here's an example. In a gesture of goodwill, the invading army gave candies and chocolates to residents as their tanks went down the highway. Yes, this is propaganda, but they are trying to show we are nice. So they did this to show that they are nice. Okay, so we know the school is trying to show that it is nice. Now that we know that, let's answer this question. First, you need an adverb because we have a verb in allow, so we could say we'll quickly allow, we'll nicely allow, we'll evidently allow, but we need an adverb before a allow. Now, most adverbs end with ly, but d is not an adverb. Friendly is actually an adjective. It's describing a noun, so it breaks the rule. For example, she is a friendly person. Here it is an adjective, but if I say he talks friendly, this is incorrect because friendly is not an adverb. It breaks the ly rule. You could say he talks in a friendly way. Therefore, friendly is not correct. We need an adverb, but friendly is not an adverb. Now we look at the remaining choices. We're going to base it on context. Accidentally means by accident. Generously means nicely or kindly. Inadvertently means accidentally. First of all, because A and C are the same idea, we can remove both. If the two answers are the same, they can't be the correct answer. Also, the school wanted to do this, so it wasn't an accident. We know they wanted to do this because it was a gesture of goodwill, so it is not an accident. Therefore, the answer is B, generously. Final question, 133. To get this answer, grammar is your best friend. Now in real life, if grammar is your best friend, you should make a new friend. But for this question, grammar is your best friend. First, we can eliminate B. Why? Well, here's a quick tip. That never comes after a comma. Here's an example. She is thinking about purchasing a product that is only sold in one store. This is correct. Notice, no comma. But if I say she is thinking about purchasing a product, comma, that is only sold in one store, this is incorrect. So eliminate B that. Now we can eliminate D. Why? Well, this would be a comma splice. A comma splice is when you have independent clause, comma, independent clause. That would be subject plus verb, comma, subject plus verb. That is incorrect in English. In other languages, it's okay. But in English, it's called a comma splice. Here's an example. I opened a new company, comma, it is hard finding employees. This is incorrect because you have two independent clauses beside each other. Correct, you could say, I opened a new restaurant or I opened a new company and it is hard finding employees. Or you could use an adverb clause. Because I opened a new company, it is hard finding employees. That can be correct because these are not independent clauses. 
However, in this TOEIC question, if I say customers will receive points every time they make a purchase, that's an independent clause, comma, these can be redeemed, that's an independent clause. That's a comma splice then. Therefore, it is not D. Now you have A or C. Let's think of the simplified sentence. Customers will get points. They can be redeemed in the store. So we can turn this into one sentence using an adjective clause. An adjective clause can start with which, that, who, were, when, whose, whom, not what. For example, I don't say, I have a house, what smells like cheese? But I can say, I have a house, which, or that, smells like cheese. I have points, that or which, I can use to make a purchase. So the answer is A. If there weren't a comma, you could choose that or which, but because we have the comma, our only choice is which. Well, we looked at some difficult questions. Hopefully you learned some key tips. Your TOEIC score is going to improve. And do me a favor, share, like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell, whatever it does. Most importantly, have a great day. Bye.